How do you make a delicious, stable cocktail mix that you can keep on hand? Well, today on WTF, we're going to show you how to do just that by using 210S to make a great, stable Bloody Mary. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. Here on WTF, every week we talk about unique ingredients and techniques, and we show you new recipes that you can do in your own kitchen. So remember, subscribe, ring the bell, and you'll get notified of our content when it comes out. And this week, we are going to be talking about how do you keep a cocktail mixer stable. Specifically, we're going to do a Bloody Mary, but hopefully you're inspired to do all kinds of other cocktail mixes as well. All right. Now, Scott, we have a bottle here of cocktail mix that you made over a month ago, and it's yeah. really stable. So we're looking forward to showing people how to do that. But what's typically happening when people start mixing a bunch of cocktail ingredients together? Sure. So actually, this has no alcohol in it. So it's basically uh, tomato juice, a bunch of other uh, ingredients, some heavy, some light. And what's going to happen over time, especially with like a fresh tomato juice, is mm -hmm. things are going to separate. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Any solids will float to, or sink to the bottom, mm -hmm. and any lighter, uh, you know, sometimes with the foam stuff like that will come up to the top and it's just not sightly like you you don't want to see that when you have a nice cocktail you don't want to pour a cocktail and have a big split in it you want it to be uniform mm -hmm. right? right so we had to find a way to make sure that it is uh, you know, completely uniform without or throughout, and you don't have to shake it because the peppers, you know, speckled throughout uh, mm -hmm. the seeds, the horseradish, everything that is in it is all you know evenly dispersed. So you're not every time having to shake it and mix it up. Now over about a month, we only had about five percent separation. So okay. there's only about five percent was settled at the bottom, and we just shook it up. But that was literally a month of it sitting in the refrigerator, right. just testing it, just to see. So this is extremely stable, and there's a few other fun things in there as well. Yeah, and. Uh, uh, if people have been watching WTF for a while, you know we carry a lot of emulsifiers, a lot of stabilizers. Which one did you find to be the best one for this application? So 210S is what we have for a stabilizer in this. Okay. And it's great because when you make a cocktail with it, it works really well with dilution. So if okay. you're adding any ice to it, the water is going to obviously mix in and you're not gonna have like those pockets of water. You know, sometimes when you okay. have a, a Bloody Mary, you'll see like big pockets of water that yep. you just have to stir up. Like this really dilutes very easily, especially with you know the alcohol that's in it and whatnot. You're not gonna see a big like separation immediately when you add something like the alcohol. Okay. So it's just, just great. And this comes from uh, a recipe from Dave Arnold where he made a hot buttered rum. So mm -hmm. we actually do add a little bit of fat to our cocktail mix here Ooh, to make okay. it really rich because this is a savory cocktail. So I think we can get into demo and just kind of see what we're working with. Yeah, sounds good. Great. So the first thing I'm going to do is just rim my glass. This right here is our hot sauce powder. Okay. So I'm just going to rim it with a little bit it's of the hot sauce spicy. powder. It's very spicy. It is very spicy. Use it uh, to your liking. <laughs> okay. Here we have some vegetable juice. So this is mainly tomatoes, beets, a little bit of celery. So, and some carrots. We're just going to add this directly in. It's nice. It's kind of uh, reddish pink, but it's Ooh. great. Over time, you'll see that it becomes more mm -hmm. orange and whatnot. So, I'm going to add here is uh, paprika, which is going to bring a lot of that color forward. Some hot sauce powder as well. Mmm, it's very spicy, Bloody Mary. Yeah. Some celery seed. Okay. Black pepper. And these are all to your liking. If you find that it's too much horseradish, too much black pepper, you can uh, change it up. And that's the horseradish right horseradish there? Horseradish right there, yep. Great. Then I have some lemon juice. Now, if you wanted to, some people like to put clam juice. That's totally fine, <laughs> whatever, whatever you enjoy. Then I'm going to add my 210S just to a little bit of salt here. You can mix it in with other ingredients. That's totally fine. Okay. I'm just going to mix it into any dry ingredient that I have. Salt works just fine for this. It's okay. pretty and fine. Why do you recommend doing that? Just so it doesn't clump. Okay. These are water-loving ingredients. Mm -hmm. So if I were to just dump it in right here, it's not going to disperse like a black pepper or anything like that. Okay. It could clump up. And then we don't want to have to waste you know, some of this ingredient and um, potentially have a big clump of something. Yep. And you, you would notice if you suddenly you have a... Oh, Involved yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. And we want to get the most out of it. So okay. this is uh, Worcestershire. Mm -hmm. 
I have no problem saying Worcestershire. Some people do. Great. So I'm going to blend this up, and then I'm going to add in our last ingredient. Well, I'm going to add in the 210S first. But. So it's very simple. Once I get this going, just make sure those are mixed in. And if I were to stop this right now, all of these, you know, particles are going to sink right to the bottom. Yep. So I'm just going to mix this on low. So once it's kind of created a vortex like this, I can then sprinkle this in. Mm -hmm. Now, some of our hydrocolloids have to be heated. Does 210S require any type of heating? No, 210S does not require any heating, so you don't have to worry about bringing this up. Okay. Uh, one reason why we are happy to use that in here is that we have a fresh fruit juice in here. Okay. No, I'm sorry, vegetable and fruit juice. Uh, so I don't want to have to worry about, you know, kind of ruining those flavors by right. heating them up. So, our last ingredient is actually brown butter and bacon fat. So, we're going to really kind of intensify the savoriness by adding some fat to this. All right. Yes. So, I'm just going to do this. And 210S is a great emulsifier. Okay. So, I'm just going to get this going. Just grizzle it in just like you would any other emulsification. Okay, and for people who don't know what an emulsifier does, what's an emulsifier? <laughs> an emulsifier basically mixes two liquids that don't like each other, fat and water, and it makes them homogenous. It makes them uh, coexist. So I'm just going to get this in there, and you'll see the colors start to change slightly. Yep. It'll be a little bit more orange. I can see it starting to thicken up already. Yeah, and, and the 210S does slightly thicken as well, okay. So, but it's a very mild thickener. Yep. But it's good because we are going to mix this with a little bit of ice in our cocktail so it'll dilute it and then obviously the alcohol that we're adding to it. Okay. So this is getting pretty close. So the other thing about um, a lot of the hydrocolloids is that people want to know whether they can mix it in by hand or is it required that they use a blender? Is this a product that requires a blender? I think most hydrocolloids work best in a blender. Okay. It's just going to be easy for yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm already going to be putting this into a blender because right. of all the other ingredients, mm -hmm. so might as well just put it in there. But um, 210S is pretty forgiving, so if you were to mix it, let's just say, with sugar, you mm -hmm. could whisk it in. Okay. Or, or, or any other, you know, um, ingredient like sugar, you know, that's fine. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take the top off that, and I think we can make our cocktail now. Okay. So I'm going to spoon here so we can kind of get a, a look. And our mixer. Yep, you can see it's coating that spoon yeah, really nicely. Really beautiful. Great. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some ice to our mixer here, or our mixing glass here. So just enough. Fill about three-fourths of the way into that glass. I'm going to put in vodka. You can obviously use tequila or mezcal if you wanted to make a Bloody Maria. Just this out as well. I'm just going to add some of our mixer here. And when I stir it, it'll come together really beautifully. That's pretty cool. Now, I'm sure somebody's going to ask, is it possible for you to mix it in with the alcohol and then store it in a jar and keep the emulsification properties? Yes, you okay. absolutely could. So if that's what you wanted to do, mm -hmm. you absolutely could just mix it and put it right into that uh, container, leave it in the refrigerator or the freezer, okay. or not the freezer, sorry, the refrigerator, <laughs> and then absolutely do it. Cool. It works great. So mm -hmm. we have this gorgeous cocktail here. Ooh. Right. I like the color. Really beautiful. So then we have some accompaniments. We have some olives, some celery, and just to let people know what you got in there, some bacon. So Janie, do mm -hmm. you like Bloody Marys? I do not like Bloody Marys. Do you <laughs> uh, like Bloody so Mary, Scott? In, in the tasting <laughs> for this, I, I, I do enjoy how this tastes, but I'm not a Bloody Mary yep. fan. And uh, I don't drink much. So I think we're actually going to bring in a guest. So we're going to summon our uh, videographer Cole, and then one, two, three. 
Cole! Look hey, at that. Cole. Hey! That's why he's a videographer. What's going there on? <laughs> <laughs> so, Cole, you want to take a sip of this? Yes. I'd I didn't give you a to. straw, so you're going to get a lot of the. Uh, the hot sauce powder. Yeah, the hot sauce totally powder. Fine. Sweet. I like spicy. It's, it's a live spice. action on camera. I'm making a mess. Oh, that's really good. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. I could have put just cayenne on I've the rim and you would have said <laughs> it. I've tasted this before, but yeah, this is this That's is the refined good. version. You haven't had the refined mm -hmm. version. It is a refined version. Oh, well, even better. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'll, I love this. This is very good. Good. Great. Yay. It's an honest reaction from Cole. <laughs> yeah. All right, go take that. I'm going to take this with me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll get pictures later. <laughs> well, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. He's going to save until 5 p.m. when he gets off work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's very simple to make, and you can do this with any cocktail. Mm -hmm. You obviously don't have to add the uh, the fat to it, which may be a question as well. Mm -hmm. You can add whatever you want um, and just use the 210S to make it nice and stable throughout. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah. And, and I think, you know, one of the things that we really try to emphasize here is that the ingredients can be used in whatever you're making. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily like, oh, I have to make this particular yes. Bloody Mary recipe. So if someone's like, oh, I have a great idea, but I'm not sure how much to use, do you have any suggestions on like starting ratios for, their, for them to experiment? Yeah, so I would always start at around 0.5 to 1% okay. for this. This can go all the way up to 2%, but at that point you're gonna get a lot of the thickening properties, which okay. you know, doesn't make for a great cocktail unless you're doing something, obviously, that you want thickened. But I would definitely okay. start at that 0.5% uh, where this is basically at between 0.5 and 1%. Okay. Uh, and you'll be able to stabilize and keep everything sus uh, suspended, which is the big part of this. And is that by the weight of the entire recipe the entire or just recipe the that you okay. are mixing mm -hmm. uh, before the alcohol? So if, if you wanted to keep it and keep it stable like that or make it and keep it stable like that before the alcohol, if you were going to add in the alcohol, you, uh, you know, should probably do it by the weight of the alcohol as well. So okay, great. awesome. So if you do want to give this recipe a try, the links will be in the description below. Um, certainly you're welcome to you know try the small bag or 210s but if you are do want to win our weekly giveaway just leave in the comments below like a cocktail that you think yeah a cocktail that you would be able to do with yeah this. what we really really enjoy is that we've been getting a lot of ideas from people about like all kinds of fun things that they're doing which of course gives us ideas to do more different and fun recipes here in the test kitchen so and remember um, if you do want to learn more about 210s we have an entire episode about it you can see the card right here below to check out that episode. And we'll probably toss another episode about cocktails if you enjoyed that too. So until next week, from here in the Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Gowdy.